In this video, which is the JavaScript for beginners creating buttons, we're going to focus on basics of buttons in JavaScript. So for this, we just have a very basic border template here. You can see here is nothing fancy. It's all empty, empty script tag, empty body tag. And now you can see here, well, this is the template. It's blank, but basically have a darkish background. And then I have here the developer tab open. Let's start to create something. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're just going to put in HTML a button tag. So we're going to say a button. Then we have here a closing tag for button. Then we say a text button. And then we're going to give it an ID. The ID is a unique identifier. Since it's unique, it can only be once for every tag. So we're going to say here for this ID, we can just say my button. There we are. So now we have this. Let's save that. Refresh. You can see we have just the basics. But if I click on that, nothing happens. So what I would like to do now is communicate this HTML button to JavaScript that we do something and show something in the developer tab. To do that, we go into the script. And the first thing what I want to do here is first say in JavaScript, we're going to look in HTML for this specific button or this tag or element with the ID name of my button. To do that, I'm going to create a constant and this constant, I'll just give it the same name as my button, but you could give it anything you want. doesn't really matter. Now, what I want to do is I say here document dot get element by ID. And once I did that, this is a string value, so we make sure we have the single quotation and copy this here, the my button ID name. So now, if you see this, what does this mean? Basically, we're saying go into the HTML document, which is this document here, and get or search for a element. And the element in uh, JavaScript is another word for tag. Look for a tag with the ID name of my button. We don't specify which, which tag we're looking for, but we are specifying the identifier of ID. That's this here, my button. So now if I do a console log just to show what this shorthand is, and this shorthand is nothing more than this line of code. So let's save that, refresh, and you can see here the exact uh, item it searches in the HTML for the button. Because this line of code is basically this one here. That it can find that specific element and the button. But if I click on this button, you can see nothing happens. So what I want to do next is add up the item or at least a click event that when we click on this, we see this button details. To do that, what I'm going to do here now is just grab this my button, which is basically this item here, and then we're going to connect or add a click event. JavaScript is designed to create interaction with the page. So that's what we're doing here. So we say button or my button, that's a constant name, dot add event listener. So we're adding a new event, and this specific event here will be a click event as you can see here comma remember this is a string here and then in here we're going to say we're going to make a function and this function will have an event if we just record that specific event now what we can do is copy this chunk of code cut it out paste it in here and save what happens now is because of this here, we add it to this button, because this my button is this here, a event. And this event will only listen if we click. If we don't click, nothing will happen. If it clicks, it will trigger an event. And then what it will trigger is this specific here. It will also record all the click events that will happen, but I'll show you that later on. Let's save this, refresh, and now let's press this button. There we are. As you can see here, every time we click on it, we get the details of the button that we clicked. So we could do something else. More, of course, but let's grab this event here and see what is this exactly. If I save this, 
refresh, click on the button, you can see here, this is what we call a pointer event. Basically, it consists of all the details related to this event. And there's a lot of things you can see here, is trusted, and is trusted refers to, is this being clicked by a mouse? In this case, yes. So it's really being clicked. It's not being clicked programmatically like a bot. So that's why it's, it's trusted. There are some more, a lot more here, but I will not go into them. But one that's also quite interesting is, for example, if someone has hold press the alt key and then they click by with the mouse, then this will be set to true. In this case, I just click the button with my mouse key, not holding a alt key. So let me just show you, for example, if I now hold press the alt button and now i click with my mouse you will see we get the alt key as true and if i refresh and just click normally without the alt key this is set on false very interesting because you could maybe add another layer of complexity to this so for example let's create an if statement and this if statement will check if the alt key is true or false let's grab this first remember the console log here shows the event if i want to specify the event with an alt key then we can say here dot alt key this event here could be used for anything you could do an e or any other letter it doesn't really matter but then this here needs to match so this should be e dot alt in that case so if i click now it's false if i do now if i hold the alt key and then press now it's true so what we could do here for example is let's create an if statement if alt key equals strict true what i would like to do then is add an additional layer on the console log uh, let's copy this and then i will say here you press the alt key all right so now if i refresh if i press here without holding the alt key and now i will say here hold press alt key and then click you can see it's true and then it will indicate an additional notification here very nice this could use you could use this for different things so all right so what you could do as well besides this is we could even make this for example instead of a click button a mouse move button so when i hover or move my mouse on this button you can see here it creates a lot here and if i now hold the alt key you can see this works all right although i don't recommend that kind of event because you can see here that is a bit tricky it triggers this event way too often all right so now we have this so what we could do here next is let's start putting in something very fun and useful so let's remove everything here and what i would like to do is i would like now to put in a name and that name i want to show eventually somewhere in my header here so what i'm going to do here i'm going to make an h1 and i'm going to give this a name welcome that's the ID and then here I'll say here welcome user and then we just have a closing h1 tag there we are all right let's save this refresh now you can see here we have something but this is default of user what if I would like to put in a name in here so what I'm going to do now is in here I will put a name so what I'm going to say here um, we're going to say here I guess we can just put that maybe in here constant will be the name and then what I would like to do here is we're going to create a prompt command and in this prompt command I will just put in here what is your name save refresh all right so now right now it just jumps automatically and maybe we should put that in the button will be maybe more appropriate so what i'm going to do is we're going to cut this out put it in here 
and now there we are so you can see here what we have is the command so what I'm going to do next is once I have this name let's do a console log and show whatever we insert in here so let's save this refresh refresh press the button and then I'll say here John all right now we get the name John what I would like to do is this name insert here or update the welcome user so how do we do this so what I'm going to do here next is I'm going to say here well basically I'm going to grab this ID same logic so but now I have to make sure it is within this functionality here and the reason why is if I do it outside this item here has this name but if I do a console log here name it will show no value at all so let's say here name it will probably give an error it says sorry I cannot find the constant of name let's save this and see what happens all right cancel nothing all right you can see here it just gives blank and the reason why it gives blank is because first of all we didn't specify this but secondly this here is within this function so it will not go outside of this function or this value will not be moved outside of it so that's very important there are tricks for this but i'll skip that for now so and i'll show you that later on so what i'm going to do now is just in here we have the name i want to show that and now what i'm going to say here i'm going to grab this welcome and i'm going to say here constant welcome equals the document dot get the element with the id name of welcome basically i'm just saying go and search for this h1 tag and once we have this i would like to update whatever the text is in here so i'm going to say here for welcome i'm going to say here dot the inner text and the inner text will be equal to what exactly we have this welcome i would like to keep this so i need to make this a string value and to make it a string value i will use backticks because i'm going to use a easy way of concatenation and if you're wondering what is concatenation it is just adding text and variables together which is very like this this is one of the variables that are constants i'm going to put it in here but we cannot do it like this because it will not know that this is a text or a real name whatever so what i need to say here is back tick back tick then i'll put in here dollar sign and say your name and this name is now whatever i insert basically in this prompt command so now i can just save this and refresh now click the button say john and then enter as you can see here i'm losing the exclamation mark i would like to keep that so to do that i'll just put it here the exclamation mark save refresh text uh, let's test this by clicking let's say here john again all right now this works however if i refresh and i just say here and i just leave it blank what will happen is we get now welcome and the value is blank i don't want this that if there is nothing i would like a default value so what i can do here is you can see here the name what is your name whatever the name is inserted but if you insert no name i would like to say here a default we just keep it on user or no name user let's keep it like that no name user save that refresh yes all right and now as you can see here because we didn't insert anything we can just give a default value as no name user or maintain it as user anything you want and this here helps us to create an item so now you might wonder all right how would i be able to let's say this name here i would like to put a name here so what we could do here is instead of a a, a constant we're going to use a let value and this let value will be used as name this trick is called hoisting and basically it says the following we're going to hoist which is like a flag that you're going to pull up 
if you put the flag up on a flagpole, it's called hoisting the flag. So what we want to do is, we want to use this here as the top value, while we do, do not specify any value to this. What we will do is, we will update whatever the value is, and then send that value up, or hoist it to the very top. So now, we do this, we should have a working example. So let's click on this, and now we just do this. There we are. Or we click on this and say here, John. All right. So if we don't do this, let's keep this here. And I probably can even test that, I realize, because we need to have the value here outside. So what we could do is, if we would get this here, And then we can hide this and save that, refresh, and then it will say here, John. All right, and as you can see here, it just jumps back to welcome user. I click on that, it does grab this one here, put it in here as a value. Anyway, that's, well, that's quite interesting. Although that does make sense, and the reason why that makes sense is because it's outside of this block, meaning that it does borrow itself in here anyway that's it for now we'll cover another one in the next video